So let's start with the game, uh, since this is going to have audience interaction. I'm sorry, King Ming, for uh, making you move the camera, but uh, what are some of your favorite microcontrollers and microprocessors? So who wants to go for it? Shout out. Uh, Arduino Raspberry Pi. Arduino Raspberry Pi, okay, so Arduino is a microcontroller. Raspberry Pi, I would say, is a microprocessor, but we'll get to the details. Anybody else? Favorite ones? Come on. Right. 8051. 8051. All right. Anybody else? Come on, guys. I'm sure Motorola everybody knows love. and loves some microcontrollers. Motorola HC11. HC11, okay. Beagle Bone. Beagle Bone? STM31. Woohoo! STM32. Mid 20. How many snakes are just microcontrollers? Any, anything. Whichever one you want. Uh, Latte Panda. Latte and Panda, all right. MSP430s. MSP 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 anybody else? Represent, come on, if you love some microcontrollers or microprocessors, shout it out. Z80s, nice, yes. 8086. Very cool. All right. So there's a bunch, and there's you know you will also be able to be, uh, you know get guess people's age based on which ones they read. Like. Wow. Usually, but um, the whole my whole talks happened because this happened. Uh, for people who don't know Jeff Atwood, Jeff Atwood is the guy. Uh, who founded uh, or who created Stack Overflow. So it's pretty massive and pretty well known and popular in the software world. And he said uh, that why would people ever want to use Arduinos if you can buy a Raspberry Pi for $20? Um, so I said, I, I see you a $20 and I raise you a $9 chip because $20 is too expensive for a microcontroller. And then somebody came up and said, well, you can buy a Raspberry Pi Zero for $5. Uh, I don't know where you can buy a Raspberry Pi. Anybody here has a Raspberry Pi Zero? Two, Two people. Okay. Everybody else, steal the one from them. Like, you'll distract them. Okay. You don't have it. Okay. But that's the problem. Nobody knows when these Raspberry Pi Zeros are ever going to be available. But anyway, uh, this, this talk is going to be about, you know, Arduino versus Raspberry Pi. Fight. Not really. Uh, but let's talk about the facts. Uh, What's, I mean, let's take the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi as examples of microprocessors and microcontrollers, where Arduino is a microcontroller and the Raspberry Pi is a microprocessor. Of course, there are different ones with different uh, you know, specs and everything, but let's take these two examples and look at what the differences are and where the differences come in, and whether you can actually replace every single microcontroller with a trade dollar Raspberry Pi, as Jeff Atwood said. So an Arduino, uh, this is from the data sheet of an Arduino, is an 8-bit microcontroller. Uh, it runs about 20 MIPS at 20 MHz, has a bunch of flash, RAM, and EPO. Okay, so standard 8-bit microcontroller. Nothing special, nothing fancy, just a very good workhorse. Uh, interesting things here, it has a temperature range of minus 40 to 85. Uh, has an active mode of 0 0.2 milliamps, uh, and some power down modes which are even lower. Raspberry Pi, on the other hand, I couldn't get a good data sheet. Unfortunately, they don't uh, they don't provide data sheets for the VCM uh, 283567 chips uh, unless it's an NDA or something. Uh, so this is the best I could get. So it's a much more powerful uh, processor, 1.2 gigahertz, 64 bit for the latest one, uh, and 800 milliamps of current draw at its normal usage. Uh, so what's the difference? Um, one of the main differences between the two uh, is how they deal with processing. Arduino is inherently a single process computer. It can generally, most, most commonly it runs one task and only one task. So if you write the app, so you, let's say you're writing an app for an Arduino, you use the Arduino library, and that entire thing runs straight on your 80 mega 328 processor. That's it, there's nothing in the middle. Straight up code running on the uh, 80 mega. If you're running stuff on a Raspberry Pi, though, uh, you have an app, maybe use a library like you know, libc or whatever. It runs on Linux, usually. Uh, that usually uses some kernel drivers that then causes some GPIO pins to flip on and off, and then you get your blinky. But at the same time, you could have multiple other apps running as well. So the model of microprocessors usually, again, I'm talking about most common use cases. Of course, you can always make your you know, Raspberry Pi run uh, in other ways, and we'll get to that is you generally always have multiple apps and multiple things running uh, on a Raspberry Pi. Was that, that love Jeff Edwards' claim? 
specifically that everything will run Linux. So yes, so yes, so yes. Really and specifically about Linux. Uh, so the, the reason you can do this on a Raspberry Pi, the reason this is really fast and effective on a Raspberry Pi is something called an MMU, a memory management unit. Uh, these are, uh, most mi microprocessors have these, and these let you switch tasks very efficiently. Uh, and this, is, this then brings us to the concept of real timeness. Uh, so you ask, what is real timeness? And unfortunately, this is the best explanation I got. Now, I'm not going to wait for you to read this. You can go check out uh, the link to this uh, in the show, uh, at the bottom. Um, but I'll give you an example of what it does. Uh, how many of you here have used NeoPixels? All right, very common, nice entities from Adafruit or, or from AliExpress. Um, and if you look at the data sheet, um, if, to drive them, they require this very, very, uh, very particular timing diagram. If you look at top left, you will see uh, it's 0 0.35 microseconds pulse for a high, and the tolerance is 150 nanoseconds. If you don't get this timing right, you don't get the color you want. Uh, so, so driving these LEDs is extremely time critical. If you don't get your pulse width perfectly right, uh, you get the wrong color. Um, and on an Arduino, the way they manage this, this is from the Adafruit NeoPixel library, is a lot of hacks. Um, it's handwritten assembly code uh, with extremely critical timing. So they have stuff like uh, uh, relative jumps, which they know exactly how long each jump instruction is going to take, and they use that to time the distance between different pulses. You need to do these kind of things and this kind of critical timing to be able to do something very, very specific that the, the NeoPixel needs. And this is real time. If you, if accidentally something comes in the middle and, and pauses for half a millisecond, your timing is totally gone and you can't drive the NeoPixel tech at all. So to be able to do this is what real time talks about. So then let's talk about Linux. How does Linux does things? So what if I told you Linux is in real time? This happened to me in school once a long time ago. A professor told me that Linux was in real time and my, my mind was blown. Um, the thing that happens in Linux is uh, the kernel preempts you. So if you're running your program, it's happily going around and making you know, uh, a GPIO can go, go up and down with pulses. Uh, it can happily stop your process completely and says, oh no, it's time for the, the TCP stack to run because you're getting a new packet or it's time for the clock to run because you're getting a new uh, packet or, or you're getting something, some other input from a keyboard. And it stops your process, does, runs the, the other process, and then brings brings your process back. Well, that's that, that's really fast, but if your if your uh, tolerance is 100 nanoseconds, that's not fast enough. The, the kernel is going to take longer than that. Uh, and that is exactly what why they say Linux is not real time. But then actually, that's not technically fully correct. Uh, Linux has uh, a variant uh, of a real-time real Linux. Um, you have to compile your own kernel though, uh, but you can make it well, run real-time where uh, you can get the kernel to not preempt you or in some cases even preempt the kernel itself. Uh, you can read up more about it on the preempt underscore RT. Uh, that's, that's the name of the patch. Uh, also, there are other ways you can go around these kind of real-time uh, requirements. For example, there's this uh, NeoPixel Raspberry Pi library, which is hacks all the way down. Um, they actually do things like map uh, the, the entire memory and manually page through it and write directly to hardware registers uh, and use PWMs and DMAs through, through, through the user space. Uh, ugly, ugly. But, Really fun to read code. Why do you need real-time processing? If you're doing any kind of motor control, feedback loops, if you're doing any kind of signal processing, if you have uh, thousands of bytes of data coming in, you only need to process it and feed it forward uh, within a specific amount of time. For example, uh, stuff like uh, microphones. Uh, or if you're doing any kind of user interfaces, musical instruments, uh, you need very critical real-time requirements. So, uh, but, you don't have to run Linux, so sort of going away from AdWords thing. Uh, you can do things like free RPOS, which uh, lets you do real-time real operations on uh, so microcontrollers, microprocessors. It's a full operating system, or a pretty good operating system, and it's real-time. There's also something called MuC Linux, uh, which is uh, Linux for microcontrollers. So there are, there are a lot of options, uh, and like I said earlier, you can always go bare metal. So you can always take a Raspberry Pi, and write assembly code or C code without any Linux on it. 
Uh, there's a very nice course by uh, University of Cambridge if you ever want to pick that up. I, I know a bunch of people, including Bauchi, tried this. It's apparently really fun. Uh, no, this is very metal. Uh, that is, another difference between the two is power consumption. So uh, if, if you're using something like an Arduino, if you're just drawing 0 0.2 milliamps, you could power your projects off a coin cell. Good luck powering a, a Raspberry Pi off a coin cell. So again, some things you really cannot do with there, something like a Raspberry Pi uh, is super low power mode because inherently it draws a lot of power. Um, then you get to the manufacturing. This, get, this is where stuff gets really interesting. Um, price per IC is very different. Uh, Raspberry Pi costs about, uh, so the, the 80 mega chip costs about $5.59. I couldn't find how much the BCM chip costs, so that, that's on a Raspberry Pi, but if you look at the similar chip from Freescale IMX, uh, it costs about $40 a chip. Um, power domains, this is another one. If you want to power uh, a, a, the same chip as what is used in Arduino, you just give it you know, a 3.3 volts VCC and a ground in color day. If you want to power a similar chip like the IMX6, it needs, let's count, 1.35 volts, 3.15 volts, 3 volts, 1.1 volts, 1.2 volts, 2.5 volts, 0 0.6 volts, 3.15 volts, 1.8 volts, and 1.2 volts of all different currents. You generally need a separate power management IC to provide all these different rails for the chip. In fact, uh, the data sheet for this chip recommends that power management IC for you. Um, pins. Pins get, are also very important. Uh, the 80 mega is, what, 28 pin? Um, PQFP package. Uh, all the big microprocessors are generally BGAs, and BGAs are horrible. Uh, you can ask Sean if you want to know how to route BGAs. He's been having fun making things that look like this recently. Uh, and actually, this has multiple problems. Uh, this has multiple problems. Uh, the more pins you have, the more number of layers you have to go, which means your PCBs are going to be more expensive. And the more number of pins you have means the more uh, your assembly house is going to charge you because they generally charge you per pin. So if you have a if you if you have a Raspberry Pi kind of a microprocessor with a hundred or five hundred pins, you know just to make blinkies, you're going to pay out of your nose for just assembly and manufacturing. Right? So this is massive differences. But then the last one I want to leave everybody with is the lights are blurring. There's a lot of fun stuff you can get these days, like devices that have both uh, Cortex A9, which is a full-fledged microprocessor, microprocessor done in Linux, and uh, Cortex M4, which is a microcontroller, and they are in the same package, so you can uh, use them together. Uh, another example of this is the BeagleBone. Uh, BeagleBone has something called the PRU, the Programmable Real-Time Unit, and it's basically a tiny little 32-bit little microcontroller that that's a lot of, that you can use, that you can program. Um, or you can get some really, really beefy microcontrollers and just, you know, blast your way through things. At the end of the day, I want to say, choose your poison. There's a lot of pros and cons. Uh, there is no one solution, but whatever you need for your project is what you should choose, not just a $20 restaurant.